Will rates ever get back to that point, to the threes even? Or are the days of refinancing over if you bought in the last few years? That's a great question. Christian I don't, all time. <laughs> I don't... If, if we see them get back into the threes, it'll be high threes and it won't be long-lived. Yeah. That's my personal opinion. Will they ever get back into the twos? I mean, I guess never say never, but in our lifetime, I don't think so. Yeah. Because mortgages have been around... I should say not mortgages, but like basically federally subsidized mortgage. Like when did Fannie and Freddie come into the mix? When did the government come out with Fannie and Freddie? That's what we got to look at because that's what our environment is now. If you look outside of Fannie and Freddie and just look at straight, if the banks made their own rules and this and that, they wouldn't even have 30-year fix, to be honest with you. They would have all adjustable rates. It, you could still get a 30-year loan, but your rate's going to be fixed for anywhere between 5 and 10 years. After that, it's going to adjust with the market for the remainder of the loan. That's how banks would want to do it. Now, Fannie and Freddie came in with the government, put that up to say, look, we want affordable housing, we want predictable housing. So we will be a buyer of these mortgages, um, banks that you lend on. So you can do a 30 year fixed at this rate. We will buy those mortgages. So now you have an outlet to sell those. So you don't have to hold the bag on, on those. And so that's the only reason really why we have 30 year fixed rate mortgages in this country is because the government stepped in and they created Fannie and Freddie and we have that whole bit. Um, are you looking that up, Evan? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it goes back into the conversation we were t talking about with uh, flop houses and efficiency units and kind of the changes in the post-New Deal era. Because that's that's when Fannie and Freddie were initially founded, was in 1938. Yeah. And it comes back to that idea of promoting home ownership. Right. We don't want people living in tiny rentals. We want everyone to buy a house. And we want everyone to be able to afford to buy a house. Yeah. Well... We might be coming full circle on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The whole micro unit thing. Yeah. You know, but, you know, so, yeah. So the, with the micro unit thing going to that, but I guess going back to the rate thing, do I think we'll ever see that? I think we can see rates back in the high threes at some point. Um, I don't think we'll see rates, 30 year fixed rates that start with a two in our lifetime. So I don't think that'll happen again. Who knows? 100, 100, 200 years down the road, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the thing that drove fixed rates there, I mean, you've got a recession that's, specifically targeted towards the housing market. The 2008 collapse was led by the housing market. And the way that government was targeting that collapse was by saying, well, we're just going to buy way more of these loans. We'll just subsidize this market even more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unless we have both those things happen at the same time again, nothing's going to push rates to that kind of point. No. Again. I mean, what did rates get down to in the crash? <sighs> Real low. I can look not, it up. not this low. No. You know what I mean? So look look at, I mean, look how crazy that crash was that happened in 2006, 2007, 2008, right? And it went all the way. Basically, 2012 was when it bottomed out yep. and when it started crawling back out of there. Um, even through that whole craziness there, I mean, rates got to... I think 3.25 I had in 2012. For a 30-year? Yep. Okay. That, you did it, actually. That was that last house we were just in. So they did get that low. Interesting. So you got to remember in in that in the 2005 to, to 2010, let's say, era, you had all those adjustable rate mortgages. You had the negative and mortgages. You had all of those kind of like exotic loan products, if you will, that all carried higher interest rates with them because they were a little bit exotic and they worked differently. Like the neg am stuff, what that was is that you had an interest rate of X, so your interest is accruing at this level. If you want to, you can make a monthly payment at a 1% interest rate, right? So we'll allow you to make this minimum payment that doesn't even pay the interest building up for the month. And it obviously does not pay any principal off either. So your principal balance actually grows versus going down when you make a payment. So they gave you, it's called it was called an option arm. You can make this 1% interest payment. This is the minimum payment you have to make, and we're fine with you making that payment. Otherwise, you can make the interest-only payment, which is higher. That pays just the interest building up on your loan, but it does not knock any principal down. Or you can make a 30-year payment. So the 30-year payment would pay the interest and principal balance of what, equivalent to what a 30-year would be. Or you can make this 15-year payment, which would be the interest on the loan plus the equivalent principal reduction of a 15-year. All right, so 2012... Was the lowest that we got? I'm looking at the uh, the Fred chart right now. Uh, 2012. It looks like the lowest that it got on the average curve here was about 3.3. Uh, I'm seeing 3.34, 3.39, so on. And the lowest that we got during COVID was 
in end of 2020, beginning of 2021, we were hovering right around 2.6 to 2.7. Yep. So ultimately speaking, the difference in buying power there is actually pretty big, but the difference in raw interest rate is relatively low. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And in both those situations, it was the government, the feds just saying, yeah, we'll buy every mortgage you will sell us. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> the pool of money is unlimited right now. Right. Yep. Yeah. And so that's so so going back to the whole Fed thing, right? We we're talking about that's how we started going down this this rabbit hole was the Fed's raise interest rates that caused mortgage rates to go down. So there's two things the Feds can do to affect mortgage interest rates. Number one is they can raise their Fed's funds rate. So the Fed's funds rate is not the mortgage rate, it's basically short term rates. Home equity lines of credit, auto loans, credit card debt, things like that. So when they raise their rate, so the Fed's funds rate, home equity lines of credit went up, all those short-term types of loans went up. When short-term interest rates go up, long-term rates go down. That's the general premise. That's why our mortgage rates went down because they're long-term. 